Peru has the goal of having its energy divided between three sources by 2011. Oil, gas and renewable energies. Land concessions are being given away in the Amazon and in the northern coast. It is well known that in the coast this is to promote the production of sugar cane, but not to satisfy the national market. Peru does not need, in quantitative terms, a significant increase in the production of biofuels, since its energy requirements are pointing to natural gas and not so much to biofuels. This makes us think that the Peruvian interest is to produce biofuels for export, and that is why very big extensions of land are given away to private investors. In the case of the coast, the concern is not so much the land, but the water availability. In Peru, the future trend is that the demand for diesel, and therefore for biodiesel, is increasing. On the other hand, the demand for gasoline, and therefore for ethanol, is decreasing. However, to date, the country is in better condition for the production of ethanol than for biodiesel. We are going to produce what we don't need and we are not going to produce what we import. As oil prices continue to increase, biofuels exportation appears as an interesting source of profit. Peru's neighbour, Brazil, is the largest ethanol producer in the world, having produced 17 billion litres of ethanol between 2005 and 2006. However, deforestation of pristine areas is a major issue and slave labour has been denounced. With a free trade agreement signed by Peru and the United States, would it be a good business for Peru to export ethanol to this country? How much of Peruvian agricultural territory would have to be sacrificed for this? Is the Amazon rainforest going to be sacrificed for the production of biofuels for export? Who would profit from the biofuels exportations? Why is the Peruvian government promoting biofuels? What is behind this policy? Is there a real policy? There is a big uncertainty in the country at this moment. Last year, when Maple Ethanol Company entered the country, the president made a play on words. In the past, agriculture needed energy and now agriculture produces energy. And he congratulated and supported Maple. A few months ago, he said something like, be careful with biofuels, watch the food production. If I was an investor, I would ask myself, what is the policy? The other thing is, should biofuels be promoted? That has to be defined. A public policy on biofuels involves complex multi-sectoral planning. How much coordination and clarity have we in Peru regarding this complex issue? We don't have much time left for developing new policies. Instead, we need to take action on concrete issues and existing policies. Sometimes policies such as the one regarding biofuels are developed in a much disorganized way. They don't have a set of policies that counter them. I consider important that we define policies clearly. If we don't, we are promoting now a big deforestation process, perhaps in a steadier pace than the one currently going on. Maybe there is not an integral policy in the country, but all the institutions working on the issue do have their own policy. In the frame of the implementation of the Free Trade Agreement with the United States, Peru has created a Ministry of Environment. After its designation as the first Minister of the Environment, the prestigious ecologist Antonio Brack has established three conditions for the production of biofuels in Peru. 1. That primary forests are not logged. 2. That biofuels don't use land required for production of food. 3. That technical irrigation is used. I actually think that at this instance it is good that there is not a completed policy because a policy on biofuels implies that other policies are defined about environmental issues, agriculture and alimentation, economic development models, use of the space, etc. I think we are at a moment in which biofuels are emerging because it is a big business, because Peru has conditions for its development, 
and it is not clearly balanced within a series of demands that compete amongst them. Do we need this from an energy perspective? What does this mean in terms of agricultural development? Given the lack of clarity, the promotion of biofuels appears to be pushed for time and disorganized. This represents a major risk for food security, biodiversity and the environment in Peru. Being a very complex issue, research should be promoted and the decision-making process should be transparent and should take into account the different dimensions and possible impacts involved. The lack of clarity, the scarcity of accurate data and the rush in its promotion configure a scenario in which decisions are not made according to integral evaluations, but in an erratic way based in short-term objectives without considering properly the future. We find it necessary to ask, are all the issues at stake being considered in the decision-making process? Are environmental and social impacts being taken into account in the promotion of biofuels. Are biofuels convened in the long term for Peru? What trade-offs are involved? What is the relation between conservation initiatives and biofuels promotion in Peru? What is the role for the recently created Ministry of Environment and the conservation community in this issue? ACSC seeks to answer these questions.